The first cafe that we visit is Café Central, which is a very traditional Viennese cafe. It is known for its beautiful interior and turn-of-the-century ambience, which makes it probably Vienna's most photographed and Instagrammed cafe. Since it is so popular, there is usually a long waiting line in front of the cafe. So if you want to avoid waiting, make sure to either come really early in the morning or book your table in advance. I opted to go to Café Central right when it opened at 8 o'clock in the morning, got my table and then had some breakfast and a melange, which is a typical Viennese coffee. And we'll talk about this coffee type, as well as the many other coffee choices that you can select from in a Viennese cafe in just a moment. In this video, we will take a deep dive into Viennese coffee culture. But before that, hi, I'm Grete and I'm a certified tour guide in Vienna. And if you plan to visit Vienna, you might want to check out my website, gretewalz.com, where you can either book a tour with me or purchase my Vienna audio guide or check out my list with Vienna travel essentials. Okay, back to the video and let's go to Café Museum. This is also a very traditional coffee house and therefore has a wide variety of different coffee types. And since it's considered a faux pas to only order a cup of coffee, let's check out the coffee menu to specify our order. The base for many Viennese coffee types is a strong small black coffee. This is usually an espresso, but sometimes it is also called mocha. The espresso can be mixed with a little bit more water and then it is called verlängerte, which translates to an extended one. If the espresso is served with cream, usually in a small jug, it is called großer or kleiner brauner, which translates to a small or large brown coffee. And last but not least, the most well-known coffee type in Vienna is the Viennese Melange, which is a black coffee, usually an espresso with a little bit more water and topped with steamed milk. And as it is custom in Vienna, your coffee will be served with a glass of water. As you can see, there are many more types of coffee to choose from in a typical Viennese cafe. If you want to learn more, please go to the blog on my website, gretewalz.com, where I provide a Viennese coffee glossary and you will also find a map of the cafes mentioned in this video. Now that we've talked about coffee as a drink, let's talk about the coffee house as a place. Because in Vienna, it is a place to relax, meet friends and sometimes even talk about business. And to create this special atmosphere, you will find the following things in most traditional cafes. The furniture usually looks something like this with padded benches, marble tables and chairs made of bent wood. Also, you will find a variety of newspapers, magazines and of course Wi-Fi. And the menu reflects that a coffee house is a place you can enjoy at any time of the day. You can have breakfast, warm meals, sweet and savory snacks and usually there is a pretty good selection of tasty pastries. After two traditional cafes, we will now have some more coffee in a modern one. But before that, let's talk about the history of coffee in Vienna. The most popular legend of how coffee came to Vienna revolves around the Ottoman siege of 1683. For more than two months, the Ottoman army besieged Vienna, but in the end they could be defeated. And when the army fled the camp, they left behind bags with coffee beans. And with these beans, so the legend goes, the first coffee house in Vienna was opened. But although this legend is a very nice story, the reality of how coffee came to Vienna is way less dramatic. The first coffee house was opened in the 1680s by John Theodat. He was a salesman, courier and probably a spy on behalf of the emperor. And for his loyal services, Emperor Leopold I granted him the privilege to sell coffee and also serve coffee. And with these privileges, John Theodat opened the first coffee house in Vienna. After that, coffee became more and more popular and around 1900, Vienna's coffee houses became the place to be. But it wasn't only about the coffee, you could also read newspapers from all over the world, which were hard to find elsewhere. Plus, you only had to buy a cup of coffee to stay for hours. This made coffee houses the ideal meeting place for artists, writers and intellectuals. 
famous figures like psychologist Sigmund Freud, Russian revolutionary Leo Trotsky, as well as Austrian writers like Arthur Schnitzler and Peter Altenberg were regulars, especially at Café Central, which we've already visited. And fun fact, Peter Altenberg even spent so much time at Café Central that he had his mail as well as his laundry delivered there. And that's why today you can still see him as a statue sitting in his favorite spot at Café Central. Many see the period around 1900 as the golden era of coffee houses in Vienna. Some of the cafes from that time, like Café Central, Café Museum or Café Landmann still exist and when you visit them, you can still feel the turn of the century charm. But then came the first major downturn of the glamorous coffee houses with World War I and then the Great Depression. And it was about to get worse. After the Anschluss in 1938, Austria became a part of the German Reich and during the Nazi regime, political opponents, Jews and other minorities were harassed, deported to concentration camps and killed. In this hostile environment, coffee houses now were discredited as Jewish and cafes owned by Jews were closed or taken over. And to escape the Nazis, many Jews and political opponents left Vienna, meaning that much of the intellectual elite that had enriched Vienna's coffeehouse culture was now gone. World War II and therefore the Nazi era ended in 1945 and the world had changed. And this was also true for Vienna's coffee culture. Now Italian espresso bars began to establish themselves and many of the traditional cafes had to close forever. It wasn't until the 1980s that the classic Viennese coffee house was rediscovered. Many esteemed establishments like Café Landmann or Café Brücke were placed under monument protection. Renovations followed and today these iconic traditional coffee houses are experiencing a revival. By the way, if you enjoy this video, please like it and also subscribe. Thank you. After exploring the history of coffee in Vienna and visiting two very traditional coffee houses, we will now have some more coffee in a modern cafe called Jonas Reindl. This cafe has a more minimalistic look and it focuses more on the coffee itself. The coffee beans are sourced from sustainable agriculture, roasted in their own roastery in Vienna and brewed to perfection in the cafe. The menu features international coffees like cappuccino, caffè latte, cold brew or an americano, which I enjoyed with milk. Next, let's go to Café Sacha, where we will get the ideal pairing for a cup of coffee, namely a slice of Sacha cake, which is probably Vienna's best known chocolate cake. If you want to know more about that, please watch this video and don't forget to check out my website to learn more about coffee in Vienna and please like and subscribe to my channel if you liked this video. Thank you and goodbye!